Now we have a section on absolute value equations. And so what we need to remember for absolute value is that um, when you take the absolute value of something, you're actually asking yourself, how many steps away from zero am I taking? Uh, the actual steps, not the direction, but the actual number of steps. And so for the first problem, um, we're asking how many steps away from zero was four? Well, it's four steps away, okay? If we do the actual number of steps negative four is from zero, it's also four steps away from zero. Um, so the answer here is um, when you take the absolute value here, we need to drop the signs, basically. Um, if this is a positive four, we drop the sign and we just get four. This is a negative four, we drop the sign and get four. Okay, well that works fine for numbers, but what about for letters? How do I know um, what goes here? When I take the absolute value of the number and I get six, I actually have two answers. If I take the absolute value of positive six, I'm gonna get six. And if I take the absolute value of negative six, I'm gonna get six. So how do we account for that? Um, the general uh, statement here is the absolute value of some number a is equal to a, okay, like this was equal to itself, is equal to itself if a happens to be positive or equal to zero. But it's the negative of a if a is negative or less than zero, okay? So um, the absolute value of a positive number is itself. The absolute value of a negative number is the negative of it. So here, the negative 4, if I took the negative of that, would be negative negative 4, which would be positive 4. So, um, so now let's try a, an equation here. Our steps are, our steps are, we have the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 5. And the first step is always isolate the absolute value. That means get the absolute value on one side totally by itself. So right now, on the left side, I only have the absolute value of x plus 3. There's nothing else outside of the absolute value on this side. So I'm ready. I have done the first step. The second step is to write two equations, uh, one positive and one negative. So I'm going to change the absolute value symbols to parentheses, and I'm going to make one positive and one negative. I wrote it here just as a visual aid, just to help you see what's really happening. I've got one positive to account for this situation, and I have one negative to account for this one. So the positive outside of parentheses means I can just drop parentheses, and I have x plus 3 is equal to 5. I get rid of this 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides, and I'm left with x is equal to 5 minus 3 is 2. Now when I do the negative, uh, what I do, the easiest um, for me, uh, is to divide by negative 1 on each side so that I'm left with just what's inside here on the left side. I have x plus 3 is equal to negative 5. So then I get rid of positive 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides, and I'm left with x is equal to negative 8. And then I just plug back in to check it. Um, if I plug a 2 in here, 2 plus 3 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. If I plug in my negative 8, negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So these both are correct. So let's look at some more examples. I have the absolute value of 3x minus 4 is equal to 2. So I write this twice and changing these to parentheses, and I make one positive, one negative. Okay, so the plus outside means I just drop. I'm going to add 4 to both sides to make this cancel. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to make this cancel. And I'm left with x is equal to 2. Over here, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that. And I'm left with 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 2. Now I'm going to add 4 to both sides to make that cancel, leaving 3x is equal to positive 2. I'm going to divide on both sides by 3 to make this cancel, leaving x is equal to 2 thirds. And I can plug those in to see if uh, my answers are good. All right, so this next one is actually a trick. I have the absolute value of x minus 4, and they're saying that that's equal to negative 3. But this is a trick. Remember that when you take the absolute value of something, the signs come off. 
So you're left with four with no sign. So when, when I have absolute value isolated, there's nothing else over here with it for me to do, and it's equal to a negative number, I know that is a trick. There is no solution for this problem. Okay, so let's come over to this one. This steps up a little bit. Okay, um, so we have some extra stuff outside here. We have absolute value, and, and that's being multiplied by 2, and then they're, they're subtracting 3 from it. So we've got to get rid of this extra stuff. Our first step is to isolate that guy. So let's start by getting rid of the minus 3. So we're going to add 3 to both sides, which gives us 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 10. Then we're going to get rid of this guy by dividing on both sides by 2. And we're left with the absolute value is by itself, and it's equal to 5. So now I set up my two equations, one positive, one negative. Okay, for this one, it comes outside. I have x plus 1 equals 5. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides to make that cancel. It's going to leave me with x is equal to 4. When I divide on both sides by negative 1 here to make that cancel, I'm left with x plus 1 is equal to negative 5. I need to get rid of this plus 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I'm left with x is equal to negative 6.